Amen. Lord, who's 
son or daughter is on skid row this morning, Lord. We're praying this morning, Father, for that mother, that daughter that is addicted to drugs and alcohol, Lord, and is unable to love and care and provide for their children, Lord. We come, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, because we know there is power attached to that name, Lord. Power to heal, Lord, that drug-addicted parent. Power to deliver, Master, these individuals that are in India, Lord. Power to restore and reconnect little children that are separated from their families, Master. The name of Jesus is above every name that is named, Lord. And we lift them up, Father. We pray, Father, for restoration in healing in this nation, Lord. In the country that we love and was born in, Father. We pray that the power of love and forgiveness prevail throughout our nation, Lord. And then we turn our attention, Lord, here at home on this corner in this vineyard where we work and where we labor and where you have planted us, Lord. This is a community, Lord, and you left us here to work on this community, Lord. We pray for the, the vision and the wisdom, Lord, to be able to carry out the task that you signed our hearts and hands to do, Lord. We pray for every laborer, Lord, that you have sent this way, Lord, that we will do and work together, and we will be on one accord to accomplish the assignment that you have given us, Lord. And then we say a special prayer for our pastor and first lady, Lord, who you have set above us, Lord, to give us and our instructions, Lord. We pray for their strength and wisdom, Lord. And then, Master, we pray, Father, for the person that is standing to the right and to the left of us, Lord, that you have blessed their homes, Lord, that you have blessed their families, Finances, Lord, that you would bless their children down to the third, fourth generation, unborn children, Lord, that you would bless them, Lord. Bless the speaker of the hour, the first lady, Lord. Hallelujah. Who well, we've waited with great anticipation to hear a word from her this uh this week, Lord. We thank you, Father, and in the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. And thank God.
Father God, we want to thank each and every one that uh, took the and uh, this offering this morning. Lord, we ask that you bless it, Father God, in the name of Jesus.
by the blood of Jesus. Not only am I covered by the blood of Jesus, I declare no pandemic, no disease, no COVID, nothing shall separate me from doing the work of the Lord. I'm talking about today living a resurrected life. All right, first lady. Amen. Amen. Women and men of God, as you pass through the dark shadows of life, you don't have to be afraid. Just walk with confidence, knowing that your home is on the other side. Yes. On the other side of glory, God promised a house. Not only a house, but a mansion. Yes. And that mansion yes. is not made by man, right. but it is made by God himself. Yes. <laughs> God wants us, saints, to live a resurrected life. Yes. It comes down to this. Will you live a defeated life? Or will you live a resurrected life? All right. Will you remain in your old ways? Or will you live in the ways of God? All right. Will you stay on the wide road which lead to destruction? Or will you take the narrow way, yes. which leads to everlasting life? Yes. I'm talking about a resurrected life. Yes. Sadly to say, some people live a defeated life. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, a defeated life dishonors God. Come on, all right, all right. When we allow sin to take control of our lives, we bring dishonor to his name. A defeated life robs you of your joy, Come on now. your power. Yeah. When you are living a defeated life, God cannot use you. Come on, lady. A defeated life destroys your Christian yes. testimony. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I want to remind you that God wants you to live a resurrected life. Can you say that with me? God wants you to live a resurrected life. And it's okay to insert yourself. God wants me to live a resurrected life. Now, in my background text, in our mission lesson this week, Roxanne, she did a beautiful job, as always. Um, and the studies were in Corinthians, and they were talking to the people of the Corinth. The Apostle Paul is writing to the, the Corinthians, to the Christians in the city of Corinth. Yeah. Likewise, our own Reverend Greg Johnson, he was teaching Sunday school, and when he was teaching, it was coming from Romans, but it was dealing with the people of Corinth. And if we can remember last Sunday, those of you who were here, Pastor also spoke, and he was talking about the people of Corinth. So, saints, you have to realize that people often try to mislead us, just as they were misleading the people of Corinth. Corinth. Yeah. Right. Some of these people you may meet in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Some of these people you may meet on your job. Some of these people may even be in your family. Yeah. Right, right. But this bad teaching was telling the people that there was no life after death. These people were being misled regarding the most important key. Right. Mm -hmm. Women and men of God, if there was no resurrection, That's right. there's no hope. Right. Women and men of God, if Jesus did not rise yeah. 
from the dead, then everything he did was in vain. My Lord, my Lord. His teachings are simply of a raven madman. Yeah. His death was a waste of life. Yeah. My Lord. If Christ is not alive, then we have no salvation. Yeah. If Jesus is not alive, yeah. there is no hope. Yeah. If Jesus yeah. is not alive, we are all headed for hell. My Lord, my Lord. Oh. Say that, say that. All right. We who are Christian know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus died. Come on now. Mm -hmm. He rose from the grave. Yes. yes and he had all power yes, in his hand. Yes. On earth, under the earth, in his hand. Now, many of you recall what Jesus had told to Mary and Martha about his brother. Mary had asked, Martha asked a question concerning her brother. And after Jesus had kissed Martha, he said, you'll see him again. Mm -hmm. And of course, Martha said, yes, I will. Right. I will see him again in the resurrected life. Mm -hmm. Martha was choking back the tears. But then Jesus declared an astonishing statement. He said, I am the resurrection all right, all right. and the life. Yeah. He who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus was telling Martha, I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am that I am. I am the truth. I am the way. Yeah. I am the life. I am the rock of ages. I am the bread yeah. of life. I am your bridge over yeah. troubled water. I am your doctor when you are sick. I am your lawyer when you are in the courtroom. I am that I am. Yeah. I'm talking about living a resurrected Come on. Yeah. All right. It's our responsibility to tell the world about the one who is the resurrection yes, and the life. Yes, we All right, come on. are to tell them the good news, which is the birth, yes. the life, yes. the death, yes. the ascension, yes. come on now. the resurrection uh -huh. and the life made the blind see. Yes. The resurrection and the life made the dumb talk. Yes. Okay. The resurrection and the life healed the leper. The resurrection and the life raised Jerry's daughter. The resurrection and the life called out and raised Jerry's daughter. The resurrection and the life on, will okay. never, will never yeah. lose its power. Right, okay. God wants us to live a resurrected life. Yeah. But the question okay. is, for all of us, are we living a resurrected my life? My Lord, my Lord. Many of us don't live a resurrected life. We fail to understand that we are more than conquerors. Yes. We are not walking in the resurrection. We don't understand who God has called us to be. Are you walking in the victory? Are you living an abundant life? A joyful and a joy-filled life. My Bible says that Jesus came and he came to give us life and he given it to give it more abundantly. God wants us to be prosperous. He wants us to be healthy. And he wants us to be wise. 
We need to understand that God wants us to walk in liberty and in freedom. Yes. God will protect us. Yes, will. I know so many believers who are afraid right now to even leave their homes. Oh, even after having both doses yes. of the vaccination. Yes. Still a fear. God did not put the spirit of fear in us. What do we need to say when we wake up and when we walk out the door? The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The apostle Paul told Timothy that God did not, and he repeated, did not put the spirit of fear. Yeah. And that's because God wants us to live a what? Resurrected life. A resurrected life. Yeah. On this first Sunday, as we celebrate the sacrifice that Jesus Christ, who was crucified yeah. on a Roman cross, oh, died, on. buried, and rose from the dead, and this one truth is what set Christians apart from every other system of belief in the world. All other religious leaders have lived <laughs> yeah. Come on now. and they yeah. died. Yeah. 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 Buddha lived, say that. Say that. then died, yeah. and he remains dead. That's right. All right. All right. Muhammad Come on now. died, yeah. he lived, yeah. he died, and he remains dead. Yes. Come on, Confucius Come on now. lived, yes. died, right. and he remains Come dead. On, amen. Amen. Every founder of every religion My lived, Lord. died, yes. and remains dead. Yes. However, Come on there is one. Come on. Lived. Resurrected life. Yeah. 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 
celebrating the Lord's Supper. Uh, I would like to invite those of you who have joined us remotely. If you have some grape juice, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 